Traveling Mail. Dot com. Between. All right. Bruh. Bruh. Hello, everybody. This is getting to go, I think, number eight. Um, it's raining outside, which has been kind of unusual for our month here. So we're doing it inside in this lovely purple couch. Melinda? Yes, it's a nice couch. Why don't you tell us what we've been up yes, to for the last month? Yes, we have been up to so much for the last couple months. We have been in the UK uh, since February 15th or something like that, 17th. Uh, a week in London, 10 days in London, six days in London, I don't know. And then a month down on um, in North Devon in a town called Ilfracombe. And then did we do one there? Mm -hmm. Oh, so we'll no, just skip seven. right over that and talk about Scotland. We've been in Scotland. We spent a month in a town called Callender, which is in uh, the Trossachs, Lake Lamond and Trossachs National Park. And now we are in Edinburgh for 10 days, or we have been, and we are leaving tomorrow for France. Uh, yeah, so... Let me tell you why we love Scotland. <laughs> we've got a list here, and we've got little initials next to each yes. one, so... Henry made the list, so I'm just following along. Uh, why we love Scotland. Friendly people. That is actually very true. People are so nice here. And I was thinking about it the other day, and I think people just are nice in general. We found that in England, too, and all over the place we've been. But I think the fact that we can talk to them really helps bring out their friendliness because yeah. we can communicate. So uh, they can they, know how much they like us. Yeah. Well, and we can, you know, we can talk more to people. And so right. then they seem more friendly than when you're just not talking to them because you don't speak their language. Um, oh, which goes into the second one, knowing the language. Also, beautiful landscape. And that is so true. It is gorgeous here. And it's not quite as idyllic as the pictures might have you believe. I mean, there's clear cuts and there's, um, you know, it's a lot more managed landscape, but it is really beautiful. And the highlands are, are gorgeous. Yeah, there's an austerity to it when you get away from the towns and cities, which there are a lot of, uh, that's really appealing to me. Um, we drove up through Glencoe, which is in our Inverness weekend video at the end of that. There's some footage from there and it was just gorgeous. And that's in over near Fort William. Uh, and I've also really enjoyed the castles and the history. There's been a wide variety of kinds of castles. Some of them are done up like Sterling. Some of them, some of them are very raw like Linlithgow and Dune. Um, and then there's the one that's just packed with people like in Edinburgh. Um, but, and then others that are sort of ruined, but have a really cool visitor center like at Urquhart up on Loch Ness. So I've really enjoyed that and the history, uh, learning a lot about, uh, the battle of Bannockburn and a lot of the royalty. Uh, I don't remember exact things, a lot of it, but it's been a lot of fun to learn about as I go. And I, I have, uh, advanced my knowledge quite a bit. So... Why don't you tell us about things not done in the videos? Oh, we've done a lot of things that we haven't documented on the videos. Uh, it's kind of hard to, I find it difficult to, to really churn out these videos like some of the other vloggers do, but um, we've done a lot of cool stuff. I got to go to see a black grouse lek with uh, the Scottish Forest Trust or something like that. Maybe you could tell us what a lek is. Oh, a lek is a dancing ground or display ground for, particularly for grouse or other birds. Um, and I, I've seen it used for other animals, but I think it's primarily a, a term for birds. And I've seen and filmed on leks in Montana for sage grouse and sharp tail grouse. And I really enjoyed that. So it was really kind of a treat to get up and see these birds, albeit from a distance, uh, just another species out up in the highlands doing their thing. Um, we have also got to go out twice uh, or made the opportunity to go out twice to see some live music in these little pubs around Calendar. Uh, and it was really cool. It's, you know, there's kind of the locals hanging out, about 10 to 20 people in these tiny little rooms, um, singing along, playing folk music, and they all made us feel really welcome. And they were talking to us and 
taking our requests and um, letting the kids participate. Uh, it was really yeah. cool. They played, uh, we got to do Country Roads Sing Along twice because that's Finn's favorite song. And he got to play guitar at one of them. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that that's really super highlight. Uh, and we didn't see a lot of uh, Highland cattle, so a lot of sheep, not a lot of Highland cattle, but there were some Highland cows up the road from us. You can go, you pay a pound, get some vegetables and you can feed them. And they are called hairy coos, which is I guess Scottish for hairy cows. Hairy coos. Yeah. So check my Instagram because I have um, the cutest photo of me feeding a cow. <laughs> and then um, some of the other things we've done was that my friend, Wee Jenny, came to visit and we, she and I did see some more cows, but um, that was super fun. She flew out from California. We spent a couple of days um, walking around in the highlands and hiking and going to see music and castles and then came here to Edinburgh for two nights. I don't know, we packed it in. We did so much. Um, I guess that is on the blog though. Oh, you said not in videos. Okay, yeah. so that was not videoed, obviously. Um, and then we also, in Edinburgh here, we met up with some friends from Livingston, actually two sets of friends. We had um, Kathy and Steven, who are still living in Livingston, came over um, not to see us, they were on a trip and we had to come into the city for a passport issue anyway, so we got together with them, which was really fun, and they had boys our kids' age, um, so that was good. And then these other friends who we knew, um, they live here now, but they are we knew them in Livingston and Henry um, coached soccer with them. Anyway, so we got to hang out with them and their three boys too one night. Went out for dinner, so that was great. Um, and another thing we have done but not videotaped is go for hikes around Calendar. There are a lot of trails and uh, I loved it. We, we hiked all over the place to waterfalls, up on these crags, like along the river. It was it was really nice. Ben Letty, which is right there. Oh yeah, Anders and I went up Ben Letty, but we did film it. Yep. So, I don't want to give That's anything true. away. <laughs> uh, and then that one. Oh, I for Sci. We went for the uh, March for Science here in Edinburgh, which was great. We got to go to that little women's march in um, Ljubljana, which was cool. And then, so, you know, if there's a march, we got to be there. And this one was big. There were a lot of people. And uh, mostly we were there because we liked the hashtag, I for Sci, which is I A Y E yes, um, no, that's not why we were there. But that was that was cool to be part of that too. Now I will speak about stress of planning more stays and locations. Oh, so coming up in France, we're staying in three different places, and it's kind of been a hassle. And it's not been a hassle, but you know, just the logistics of it. We spend a lot of work. so much time figuring out where we're gonna go, and then like once you narrow that down, which in France we could only narrow down to three different locations. <laughs> um, and then, you know, finding a place that's going to work for us that meets our needs, which is washing machine and Wi-Fi, that we can afford, which I will tell you was not easy in Paris, and really we can't afford that place, but we're doing it anyway. Um, and it was just a lot of logistics. Plus, we were trying to nail down our um, place in Montenegro because we're going to go to Montenegro after France. And that's, uh, you know, and hopefully we're going to have some friends come over from Livingston. So just trying to find a place that's going to work for all eight of us. And where do we want to go? And Montenegro, they don't speak English. So that's a whole... Uh, anyway. Just logistics. Yeah. You, we do. I sometimes think we spend more days planning the where and what we're going to do and how we're going to get there than doing stuff. Yeah, and I, it's been more than that. For instance, we were thinking maybe we'd go to Ireland in this oh. little segment after calendar, but it's just it's a lot to plan out a whole new country, getting there and getting back and carrying all your gear around. Um, and so we ended up. Uh, just sticking in, in Edinburgh, which has been great. It's a wonderful yeah, city. It's worked out well. Um, and But then we also have uh, Germany that we're trying, you're trying to plan. Oh, for us, yeah. Because we're trying to do a, several different things there. And it's just this different way of doing things than we've been doing where we spend a solid month in one single place. And, you know, it's a lot simpler that way. Uh, and cheaper, I think. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we're, we're mixing it up. We're, yeah. 
pushing the envelope a little bit and seeing what happens. Germany is going to be interesting because we really want to do kind of this hut to hut hiking. There are chalets in the mountains. They're not huts. You know, they have restaurants and lots of beds, but you can only make a reservation by calling them. And so if you don't speak German, that makes it a little bit harder. So anyway, I think we figured out a workaround, but if you speak German <laughs> and want to make some phone calls for us, uh, let us know. We'd appreciate that. Uh, okay. What's next? So we sort of talked a little yeah. bit about that. So next, tomorrow, we leave for Aix-en-Provence in the south of France. And my mom and Ed, her friend, are coming. And they're going to stay with us for a full week, which will be great. They happen to be over there um, on a river cruise. So, which was kind of one of, well, which is one of the reasons, yeah. the main reason that we're going to the south of France. I mean, it's great and we want to go, but it's because they're going to be there. And then my dear friend Christine from junior high, if you will, we were on the drill team together. Um, she's coming to visit in Paris and stay with us. And hopefully she and I will sneak away for a couple days, just do some stuff. She's super fun. So that'll be great. And then, yeah, I already told you about Montenegro. So, And we're also going to go to Yer and meet up yes. with some uh, friends that I've been stalking online. Uh, we haven't ever met in person, but it's another family. They go by World Towning, and uh, they've been living in Yer, France, for, I don't know, eight or nine months almost, I guess. And uh, I don't know, I've sort of followed along, and I'm really excited to meet up with them and maybe do a little collaboration on YouTube and that sort of thing, so... Yeah, what am I doing? Halfway, halfway through. How oh, we're you? we are How about are halfway through of our year uh, in Europe. Yeah, and uh, I feel like we're, despite the uh, complexities of planning and switching things up a little bit, I feel like we're kind of. I don't. I feel a lot more confident about a lot of things. Still uh, on the edge of my comfort zone a lot of, a lot of times, <laughs> but that's good. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm psyched we're doing this. Uh, have no idea what we're gonna do when we get back, but we'll figure that out when we have to. <laughs> <laughs> I'll figure that out on the airplane ride home. Yeah. Um, How are you feeling? A I bit? feel it's strange. It feels like we've been gone from home forever, and at the same time, it's like it just has gone so fast. Yeah. So I'm super excited about what's to come. I've loved everything we've done so far. Um, I'm definitely a little homesick for friends and community and also feel a little um, like we're just uh, a little superficial or something like we're not working on anything important at home. You know, I'm on environmental boards and I work for a conservation organization and you're out and you're involved and you're doing things and working in your community and here we're just indulging ourselves in whatever we can afford basically and it's fun but it does feel a little bit like i wish i had a little more purpose or something but i can get over that and go to france and hopefully lay on a beach and walk around paris um and then i think the kids are handling it really well finn's definitely a little homesick but yeah. he's also having a great time and he's excited and interested he's super excited to get to sweden in august so i'm kind of glad that's out there dangling for him yeah. to keep him moving forward um, and Andrews just kind of goes for it no matter what he's everything is awesome and uh, has been for a long time has been they get along like yeah. gangbusters you would not believe how well these brothers are like the best friends it's the sweetest thing um, but I'm sure they're both missing their friends to some degree oh I think so and I I like how they are um, both open to trying new things at least um, and they are also able to entertain themselves quite a bit uh, and uh, pursue their own starting to pursue their own interests a little bit more um, and so that's it's kind of nice to see that that they're showing some independence which they've all always yeah, been a little been bit independent but pretty independent kids yeah. from like day one i think but uh, conclusion. Uh, in conclusion. Yes, what uh, would you like to conclude? Well, again, you know, we always do this. Let us know if you have any questions or specific comments, travel advice, uh, other vloggers we should follow. Um, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, and share with your friends.
that helps us and uh, keep following along keep watching we appreciate everybody viewing and following along on this adventure all right we'll see you later see ya